In today's video, we're going to take a look at carbon footprints. And in particular, we'll cover why they're so hard to measure, how we can reduce them, and why this is often so difficult in real life. When we say carbon footprints, what we're referring to is the total amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that are emitted over something's entire life cycle. And that something could be a product, like your phone, a service, like plane travel, or even an event, like a festival. The benefit of working out the carbon footprints of these things is that we then have a better idea of how environmentally damaging they are, and so we're better able to decide whether or not they're worth the cost. It also means that we can identify the most polluting activities and try to reduce their emissions. The problem, though, is that measuring carbon footprints is actually really hard, and in reality, sometimes impossible. For example, if we consider something relatively simple, like your phone, we'd have to take into account a whole bunch of things, like how all the raw materials were sourced, the manufacturing process required to put it all together, the total amount of power that it uses over its lifetime, and finally, how it's disposed of. In addition to all of this though, there would also be lots of other things that we've missed out, like the emissions produced from transporting all the different parts around the world. Even if we have to accept that we can't get it perfect though, a rough calculation can still give us a good idea of which things are the worst emitters and allow us to compare them. And once we understand where all the emissions are coming from, we can make sensible plans to try and reduce those emissions. One way to do this is to use renewable energy sources, like wind, solar, or nuclear energy, instead of using fossil fuels. Another option would be to use more efficient manufacturing processes, which would use less energy in the first place, and also produce less waste. Reducing waste is actually really important, because waste is often broken down by decomposers, which can release methane. Governments can also help, for example by introducing new laws, or taxing companies based on how many greenhouse gases they emit. There's also something called carbon capture technology available, that can capture the carbon dioxide formed when we burn fossil fuels before it can escape into the atmosphere. It can then be stored deep underground in cracks in the rocks, such as old oil wells, where it can't escape to the environment. Unfortunately, despite all of these good ideas, actually reducing emissions is easier said than done. For example, renewable energy is often more expensive than fossil fuels. And currently, our entire economy is based on fossil fuels, which makes it really hard to change. Meanwhile, governments worry that if they prioritise the environment, the whole economy might suffer. To make matters worse, this makes international agreements really difficult because no country wants to agree to anything that might hurt its economy, unless it's completely sure that all the other countries will do the same. It's not just governments that have a role in fixing things though. Every individual needs to be responsible for their own consumption, and be willing to make changes to their lifestyle, if we're going to have any hope of averting the worst effects of climate change. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.